options that people wanted to hear about. So, yeah, we concentrated on that and concentrated on usage data collection, which is the only thing that is really common to all clouds. So, the possible uses for metering is actually goes beyond just billing. It also goes into the ability to do some auditing and the ability to do capacity planning. Um, we also had uh, discussions earlier today about triggering alarms based on the Well, that's for the future. Yes. But right now, right. With what we have. And yes, that's right. Yeah, as a reminder, technical session, we look forward into the future, what we're going to be delivering. This session, we look at what we've done so far. Um, excuse me, next slide. So we had to solve a few problems. And the first one was we needed to collect information on a per tenant basis for every resources. And so we tried. We needed also to make sure that everything was going into a single place. We needed to make sure that uh, you were able to use this project and contribute to this, pro to this project and add to this project as much as you could. So we went up and tried to solve these issues and that's led us to the following, uh, to building the following uh, team that actually built up over time. When we started talking about billing six months ago, uh, there were uh, a lot of people in the room, uh, lots of interest, mm -hmm. but when we started coding, suddenly the group shrunk. <laughs> I don't wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> And as we progressed, well, the group started growing again. And we released on Friday, last week, version 0 0.1 of Kilometer. Right. And we've had the great pleasure to work with people working from uh, the six companies that are their logo here. Um, Doug, Dreamhost, uh, people from uh, Red Hat, people from Innovance anyone in the room out there? So people from Dell, people from at and have contributed to this first release. And based on the discussion we had this morning, the whole morning was uh, talking about the future of Kilometer. Looks like we're going to have a lot more contributor for next release, right? Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting some more input from uh, additional companies, especially let's users. Let's hope the shrinking is the last time uh, to be here. Go up and down, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but at least there is lots of good intent. Um, so what did we do? So clearly we started a project using exactly the same resources that OpenStack uh, uses to do its deployment. We want to be an OpenStack project. We are not yet the official OpenStack project, but that's the goal of Kilometer. Provide an official way in OpenStack to do metering. We therefore use Stackforge. Um, we used uh, the all the facilities we could. I mean, Jenkins mm -hmm. were already integrated. Yeah, the infrastructure team has been really, really helpful at getting us uh, set up in in exactly the same way as uh, most of the other projects, so that we can transition to incubation and to uh, official project stage. You know, when when that time comes. So. so when I started presenting uh, uh, six months ago the list of meters we wanted to, con to gather, we concluded today about 90% of them of the people in yeah. detail. Uh, but it's what we I would call a minimal set of meters. We've got almost everything covered. Um, we are hoping that the technical committee of OpenStack will make us uh, an incubated project for the Grizzly period. Uh, being an incubated project will allow us to say, yeah, we are official, but not yet core. Hoping to be core for the age cycle. So if you are part of the technical committee, please say yes. <laughs> Just because my mom will be proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> Want to raise all your hands? Yeah, I'm 
I'm sure she would be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to the next slide. So we defined a set of requirements uh, in our design. And we, of course, defined that we wanted to have a scalable project. And, well, the limit to that is the database. But let's assume that the database backend we have is extremely scalable. We want Telemeter not to be blocking that, right? Right. Then we wanted to uh, have security built in. As we said earlier, three possible targets for metering usage, billing, auditing, um, and capacity planning. Billing and auditing both require the ability to ensure that you're not being uh, spoofed. I gave an, exam an example earlier today. Um, it would be so easy to make a very bad press for a given cloud if I could find a way to inject lots of false billing inform or usage information into uh, a public cloud so that lots of their customer would start complaining about being billed for lots of stuff they've never used. So we need to have a fairly secure way to uh, transmit messages and that it's not that easy to inject false information. We also need to be able to do auditing if somebody complains or if there are some regulation we need to conform to, we need to be able to verify that there is no information missing and that the uh, measurements have not been tampered with. Uh, so we built in uh, non-repeatability into it. A lot of uh, mouthful of a word, but there's a great Wikipedia article on the subject. <laughs> uh, we also wanted to have a single point to fetch data from. So we worked on an API that, well, it's V1. Can be made better, but it was already sure. really nice. Well, we're not done yet. Alpha release. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we wanted to be able to have an extensible project. So everything in the design has been built to be extensible in a plugin fashion. Yeah, like I said this morning, it's plugins all the way down. Everything from the meters that you collect to the data. Uh, database layer to the API layer, all of that is based on a plugin architecture. And that's great because that means that if we forgot about a meter we care about, it's fairly easy for you to add it. We actually um, also use plugin mechanism for the storage engine. And that's fairly important because we didn't simply say, oh, let's use SQL alch alchemy and you can choose between MySQL and Postgres, but we also went a layer above that where we wanted to be able to talk to any kind of database, whether it's NoSQL or SQL databases. And the first database that we have implemented uh, right now is MongoDB, but we are uh, progressing quite well uh, towards an uh, SQL Alchemy backend as well. That means that we actually got a proven model that can support any kind of database you may w want to use, or actually no database at all. Some people have told us we just want to push the data to some RSS feed. Well, instead of writing That's to correct. a database, yeah. you could be writing an RSS feed or whatever we can think about. Yeah, we called it the storage API, but that's really just the, the final place that the messages go. Exactly. So you can do whatever you need to there. Um, I think there's a final point on right, this yeah, slide. Uh, and the one thing that we are is lazy, right? Absolutely. So being lazy means that we wanted to reuse as much code that existed. So we <laughs> used uh, a lot of uh, OpenStack Common and a little bit of Nova. That's right, yeah. So we're uh, building on the Nova services libraries. Uh, those are, a version of those are in Common right now. Th they were not when we started. So that's why we started with Nova, but uh, we're using the OpenStack Common RPC labor, uh, libraries and uh, some of their other, I have it off the top of my head, so I forget to call it the source, but when in doubt, we're using the Common library. So actually, the code that uh, Doug actually wrote is, well, not only Doug, but all the yeah, contributors, Julian and yeah. uh, is uh, amazingly concise. Uh, I, I was we had a lot of good libraries to work with, so 
Very so good. it's been a long time I had not released something that was waiting 206 days. <laughs> <laughs> That's the current wait in uh, bytes uh, of in kilobytes of uh, kilometers. Really? Okay, I hadn't even looked at that. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I knew there was not much there. <laughs> Uh, it's actually useful. That's what is funny about it. And uh, also, uh, we wanted to be able to accept data from many sources. That means that uh, we've got a very flexible way for, uh, for uh, data to be collected. Uh, there's actually three ways, and we'll get into the details of the IP architecture diagram right now. Oh, excellent. Um, oh, yes, there it is. So three ways that interaction are being dealt with. The first one is, well, we want to uh, be able to collect information when the user does something, like launches a new instance. We, we also want to be able to um, make sure that what has been initiated is still happening. Some OpenStack projects send data on a regular or irregular basis, mm -hmm. some other don't. So sometimes we need to be able to pull for uh, the information, sometimes this information is being sent to us. Uh, and the third way uh, is uh, by, uh, well, no, actually I mentioned third way, calling, auditing, uh, listening to the audit method, and listening to the creation and deletion events. Right, so wherever possible, we're consuming the notification events that are coming from the other services. So we have not had to modify them the other services very much at all. Well, actually, we, we did influence Tinder so that they started sending. That's true, but only in the sense that they're sending notifications. It's yeah. not custom for us. Exactly. So, yeah. um, we also uh, define three types of meters. Um, based on the analysis we made, we needed to be able to have cumulative data. An example of that is uh, an increasing number of instance hours. Uh, we wanted to be able to uh, have uh, gauges to say, hey, this discrete event has happened. For example, when you assign a floating IP to an instance. And finally, some uh, events or some uh, information is uh, a matter of delta. There has been an increase or a decrease of this much right. over the past period. So these are the three types of meters that we cover. And here we go, and we designed something based on, on this uh, requirements, and uh, that's the architecture that we started with. We knew we wanted a collector that tries to a database. Right. But right. maybe we needed to fetch information from something. So we first, well, I don't actually chronologically doesn't make sense, but a first uh, way to collect information was, hey, all these OpenStack components do send uh, information, notification information to the common uh, uh, RPC bus, which is now in OpenStack Commons. Maybe we should be listening to them and transforming them into events that we'll store in the, in the data store. Second, th there were a, a few things that we couldn't get out of the events and that we couldn't get through a normal calling. And that is information coming out of Libgrid. Uh, so we created uh, an agent that runs on every single Nova uh, compute host, host yeah. and that would uh, grab this information from Libgrid locally and push it to our own bus. And third, we had a, a few services from which we needed to pull information on a regular basis. So there is a central agent that can uh, initiate these uh, API requests to uh, Cinder, Glance, and soon Swift. Yes? Uh, in terms of time? It's customizable. By default, we have a, a global uh, flag to set the frequency to 10 minutes. In a future version, we'll be able to modify that on a per meter basis. But as a uh, at the moment, it's one setting for all meters. Right. We're using the RPC, uh, standard RPC mechanism uh, in OpenStack. 
so it's Ruddy 10 key or uh, key pool that okay. have been tested so far. Um, they do guarantee delivery. Okay. So next step was to be able to extract the, da the data uh, from uh, the data store. And to do this extraction, having an API was a lot better than telling people, hey, here is our database schema, because we didn't know what the database schema would be. As I told you, pluggable mechanism, the database is actually something that may or may not exist. If it exists, it better be able to talk with our API, and that's part of the plugin for the database. That's right. Um, the, AP, the API, we have a few examples in a slide or two. I can't remember mm -hmm. the order yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's coming up soon. Um, but it's a fairly simple REST API. In terms of um, providing uh, a way for people to understand what how Silometer is working, we are targeting for the next release. And that's uh, actually there is a first implementation of this mm -hmm. in the review queue to also have a plugin inside of uh, Horizon that would show usage data inside of Horizon. This is not there yet, but will be available very soon. In terms of, uh, s we'll stay on this slide for yep, a second. Sorry. In terms of scalability uh, of this, well, here the event bus is something that is fairly scalable, as we can have uh, as many server as we want. Collector is also fairly scalable, as you can have as many collector instances as you want. Uh, central agent. There, as long as a cent uh, two central agent don't collect information from the same host, you can have as many as you want. Um, event listener is part of the collector, doesn't uh, count. And again, the compute agent is on every host, Nova compute host. Uh, therefore, you just need to make sure that you can connect to the message we we are happy with it. So. This has to be validated in real life, and Greg is very well placed to talk about real life. Here. Yeah, uh, we'll get into that a little bit <laughs> later in the presentation. But on the paper, we don't think we have a bottleneck there. No, it's additional data. It's not the same data that we call. Uh, actually, for example, we will receive an event from Nova that says, I've created instance number one. Uh, and uh, What's important uh, is that we want to make sure over time that instance number one is still there. So the compute agent, which acts a little bit in a polling fashion in this case, will check r on a regular basis that instance number one still exists. And will send us an event saying it still exists. So this way we can, um, if Nova has forgotten to send the image, the instance has been destroyed, or if the instance is destroyed without uh, a user request, that can happen, so the bug, uh, <laughs> we stop billing the company. Um, so every piece of metering data that we collect is recorded in the database as a separate object or row, and you can get the events back out of the database as well. So even though we might collect over the s uh, for the same instance several times, all of that data is available. It's not, it doesn't ever overwrite. Is an important point. We are going to get to that in a second. Yeah. Uh, maybe even now we can okay. get to the next slide. <laughs> All right. Uh, unless you had. No, no, that was good. Thank you. So um, actually, I'd like to. Okay, so explain um, the API since you designed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we had several different kinds of questions that we wanted to be able to answer with the API. Uh, primarily. Uh, at DreamHost, we're billing for things like instance hours and bandwidth and CPU utilization and things like that. So we needed to be able to uh, find out how long something ha had been running, how long an instance had been running, and so we have an API for querying the duration. Um, we also needed a, a min and a max and an, uh, a total calculator so that we could uh, ask the API what's the maximum bandwidth that was used by a tenant in a certain period of time so that we could uh, adjust the billing for that, and what's the total amount of uh, storage space that the volumes are holding, for, for example. 
um, so that we can charge them for storage. Uh, so the API reflects those kinds of questions right now. There are some pieces that we put in the API design that we haven't finished yet, um, but the basics are there for uh, initial integration with our billing system, and we've actually com completed that integration work. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and then as I mentioned before, there's also an API to extract the raw data. So if you have some arcane way that you want to calculate billing that we can't accommodate in the other APIs, you can just pull all of the metering data right out of the database and process it yourself. Um, if, uh, if, for example, you wanted to uh, look at the rate of change of something or, or, or something like that where we're not calculating that, then you, you could do that by looking at the events themselves. And uh, what you see on the screen is just a, a sample of the API. That's right. So the uh, the APIs are there's several different endpoints based on how you want to query. So if you want to uh, get the total for a resource for a meter, there's an API for that. But it, there's also an API that lets you get the total for uh, a meter across an entire project or across an entire tenant. Um, and so it, it's flexible enough to bill at whatever granularity that you actually care about. So we, at DreamHost, we're pulling data based on individual instances so that we can uh, do the totaling ourselves and offer discounts at different rates and things like that. Uh, but we could also just say, how many instance hours did the user use this month? Um, and something that we don't show here are the parameters we pass to the API. That's right. So in addition to the parameters that are part of the URL, you can also pass uh, start and stop times for the query so that you don't get all of the data. So uh, you can run a job every day or every few hours or something like that and, and do incremental updates of your uh, billing system based on that. Any questions regarding the API? So this is basically where we are at. We delivered last week uh, the first Fulcrum version, a little delayed compared to the project. We think we were in four. We're only a week late. Yeah, we were just a week late, but you know. It's pretty good. It's pretty good for a project which is not yet part of the project. But yeah, we made it before next the summit. Time we will have to be yeah <laughs> on time. Um, we cover Nova, Glenn, Tinder, Quantum, Swift, few of the obvious uh, elements missing here but we heard uh, Innovance saying they will do that next week. Yeah. So coming soon. Um, and uh, for Grizzly, we already have uh, an interesting roadmap. Uh, do not sell that to your customer today. That's future statement and of course. Unless you want to sign up to help. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, we, we hope uh, next week uh, the TC will decide that we are incubated. We want to uh, integrate uh, in the API the, the notion of a, a user-directed API. Currently, the API is only addressed to the admin of the overall infrastructure. Uh, it might be useful in some cases for users to be able to fetch the information about their individual uh, case. Uh, we want to be able to uh, integrate with Horizon. I already talked a little bit about that. We want to have agents for other projects. So Swift, I mentioned, but for example, the, the Heat project, which is seeking incubation in parallel to Silometer, might be another good target. And um, if you have your own project, feel free to come and contribute uh, your metering information there. Uh, there could be also some new uses for the collector. Uh, we'll talk a little bit in a second. We have a slide on the possibility mm -hmm. of the extension of the role of Telemeter. And uh, we are going to be completing uh, the SQL Alchemy driver. And in H, well, we'll, we'll be in four, I hope. Yep. And we'll have a lot of new features, but that will be defined at the next summit. <laughs> Don't be far out. So, what, uh, I know, we are in DreamHost, I thought we were going to oh, go yeah, to the okay. So, um, I mentioned that uh, at DreamHost we've launched our uh, Dream Compute public cloud, and one of the uh, primary features that we knew that we would need in order to work with OpenStack was a way to get usage data into our billing system, so that's why I'm so heavily involved in the Telometer project. Um, we have a large database of existing users and they have services and we're billing them for those things using our existing billing system and so 
We didn't want to build all of the, uh, our, you know, all new tools for that, but we did need to get the data out of the OpenStack metering system into uh, our system. And so that's the tool that we built was the tool to go between the two. Um, we wanted to make sure that we were measuring only the things that we actually cared to bill for. So right now, Solometer actually measures more than we care about, but it does include all of the features that we uh, need to measure. Um, instance hours, basically the runtime at certain flavor size, uh, block storage capacity, how much disk space they're using on our Ceph cluster, um, the number of image uploads, and, and uh, we haven't decided what we're doing as far as charging for some of these things, but we knew we wanted to think about charging for some of them, so we made sure that these were all included. And then bandwidth, which turns out to be a little bit of an interesting case. Uh, the meter that's built into Solometer measures bandwidth usage at the virtual interface, but that doesn't help us because uh, what we want to do is charge differently based on uh, public internet bandwidth versus internal to DreamHost bandwidth, and we can't tell the difference between those two things just by looking at the virtual interface. The, there are computing resources at DreamHost that are not inside the cloud cluster, and so we have to be able to differentiate the two. Um, we're collecting data on the router and measuring it in bytes and packets at this point. So does that answer your question? I'm not sure what you mean by 96. Sure, so um, the, the API lets us do the aggregation like that and then we can manipulate that afterwards. So I, I, I believe we could answer that question, yes. You've got the raw data, you can do the extrapolation you want based on this raw data. Right, yeah. Uh, okay, so I mentioned that we're charging differently depending on where the traffic goes and the meter that's built into Solometer doesn't do that for us. So we actually built a custom meter that runs outside of Solometer but sends data to Solometer to be collected. So that's another area in which Solometer is extensible. You can send us metering data from whatever source you happen to have, and we'll just collect it in the database and let you query it using the API. So the tool that we built to get the data out of the Solometer database and into our database for billing is the DreamHost Usage Data Extractor, or as we call it, the dude. And it uses the Solometer API exactly as any other client might use the API. And then it uses an API that we built for our billing system to write data in. So we run the, the dude every day, and he asks about all of the resources that each user has used during the previous day, uh, does a little bit of aggregation on it, and writes that usage data back into our database, um, into the billing system. And so, before we go to the questions uh, side, uh, I thought we had a slide, maybe we removed it or maybe we forgot to do it, about future uses of, uh, of Solometer. I think we moved it early up and I didn't add. Yeah. yeah. So future use of uh, Solometer, um, based on the discussion we had a couple hours ago, mm -hmm. um, it seems that Solometer is going to be evolving more into a framework to do measurement not uh, specialized only on metering, but allowing metering, but also uh, allowing for other use, such as monitoring, for example. Um, this doesn't mean that we are going to change everything in Solometer. It means that we are going to extend the extensibility right. of Solometer. Uh, we have realized that it would be stupid to have uh, three agents on the same machine collecting the same meters uh, for three different purposes. So the first thing that we quite sure we're going to be doing is share with monitoring tool the ability to use uh, a single set of agents. So the same agent should be able to send to the monitoring interface sometimes and send to the metering interface at some other time. Right. But there is also a, a lot of other uh, possibility uh, that we are currently discussing. Um, the discussion is going to be continued actually on uh, Thursday morning at 9 a.m. if you want in to join us in the uh, unconference room. In Maggie. Maggie, yeah. yes. Okay. 
so the user-facing API is, in, in my head, but you haven't written it, so. And I haven't can't change. learned to read your mind yet. You haven't? No, not yet. Amazing. It's only been six months. <laughs> um, but you read a lot of meters, which is quite slow. <laughs> uh, so th the idea is the API should be the same, except that when you do a query, it should be restricted to what you own. You shouldn't be able to see other people. So in Horizon, we want to show an example. So basically, uh, maybe a graph of uh, your usage over the, the past few days. Um, it's it could be used and extended for actual real use case, but uh, we don't know that there is a single use case that will satisfy everybody. We don't know that anybody would be interested in the example itself or in displaying usage data without showing the billing uh, on the side. Um, e exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And we're, we're looking for input on that too if there are people who would have ideas about what that should show. So th do you mean the, the web API or the, uh, the internal API? Right now you can control how frequently the agent pulls all of its meters. And uh, the goal is to have it, uh, during Grizzly I think we said we were going to make it so that you can control how frequently it pulls each meter separately. So you could set different rates for CPU utilization versus just that remains to be seen, how we will do that. So we were thinking config file, but the conversation we had two, years, two, two hours ago made us think that may not be the right way to do it. Right, it depends on how tightly we tie in with the alarm system um, and the, uh, is that heat? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, CloudWatch. CloudWatch. So at the moment, since uh, the RPC mechanism in Nova doesn't provide any kind of security, we added two things. Uh, the first thing is um, HMAC-based signature of each message that we send. So that's a payload that's being signed, and this signature is being saved in the database, uh, and uh, it includes uh, a counter for each event that makes sure that you cannot um, lose an event or add events afterward um, uh, without breaking the sequence. So that's the actual definition in a few words of what non-replication is. Uh, in the fut future version, we hope there is a meeting about this, uh, I believe it's tomorrow. Mm, I think so. Uh, tomorrow about afternoon. increasing the security of Nova RPC, but uh, we are going to be joining and hopefully will base uh, the same mechanism on a PKI system that would be generalizable to all of OpenStack, which is yet to be seen. So right now we focus just on signing the messages that we send. I, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Me neither. Right, so all of the metering messages are published on the message bus right now. So if you did not want to use our collector and you did not want to use our database or our API server, if you had some other system that you wanted to receive those messages, you, you could plug into the message bus and get them. Um, and then the, the REST API lets you query the database using the tools that we've built. Yeah, basically, we tried to build everything so that all of the pieces were optional because a lot of people already have some level of this system implemented, and we wanted to get as much benefit as we could, you know, reusing the different pieces. And you've had your hand up for a while, I'm sorry. Yeah, 
so we definitely want to uh, explore that. I'm not sure that putting it in, in common is the right place. We want Solometer to be the place that you go to ask questions about how much or how big. So we want to do the measuring. Um, and there are lots of ways you could consume that, but we're, we're trying to actually get it out of all of the other projects so that everybody is implementing the same thing over and over again in different ways. But yeah, different approach to the same goal, I think. Yeah, uh, the unconference is something that is not scheduled in advance, so it's not in the planning, but if you go in front of the Maggie room, you can add yourself additional conferences. We did that, and it's Thursday at 9 a.m. We want to be, when we, when we say we extend the accelerometer on the next release to be not only metering, but anything about measurement, we want to be as open as possible in what can consume these measurements. Um, now, uh, that means that there could be some Apple consuming accelerometer in one way, or some oranges uh, consuming accelerometer in another way. Not sure I understood. I Answer your question. Well, we, we talked to the heat guys, and they were going to implement a lot of the same agents and polling and uh, ask, talking to LibVirt and all of the things that we've built uh, this over the past six months. So we're trying to find a way to reuse all of that. So what and we'll, we'll The data formats and a lot of the APIs will be similar or the same. Uh, we aren't sure yet exactly how much code we'll be able to share, but the goal is to share as much as we can. And basically, we're trying to reduce the duplication of effort between the two projects. Not only the duplication of effort, but again, it would be stupid <laughs> to have multiple agents yeah, right. polling for the same information. And just because it's for different destination to uh, increase the load on your servers for no real benefit. That's right. OK, you, you had your hand up. What's the size of your deployment? So we actually, if you go into documentation, there is a link to a Google spreadsheet where you enter your variable and it gives you a sum. So we, we as wanted as to an know. estimate. As yeah. an estimate, of course, yes. 